It is very important for us to understand how our brains work and what we can do to set our brains up for success and make us more inspirational as leaders so that we can bring more to the table. Now, I use the analogy of a traffic light when explaining the parts of the brain because the brain is called the triune brain and it means it's got three different distinctive parts. Now, the first part I call the red brain. In literature, you'll hear about the amygdala. People also call it your instinctive brain or your reptilian brain. And that's where our instincts live. And this is the primal part of the brain, the first part of the brain, the part of the brain that receives blood first. That's that priority for us. Because it was created, this part of the brain, to keep us safe. Blood flows there immediately when we are under threat. And it makes us either fight back, or we'll flee, or we'll freeze. Some people also go into fix mode or in hide or ignore mode when this part of the brain is triggered. So that's your primal brain, the first place you go. And it's also very important to understand how this part of the brain works. You see, this part of the brain was there when our forefathers and our forefathers, forefathers were out and about, and it kept them safe. So whenever there was a rustle in the grass next to them when they were out, they would immediately freeze and be ready to fight because in the grass may be a saber-toothed tiger or a lion or a snake. There may be danger in there. So that was immediately triggered. And what this part of the brain does, it shuts off blood flow to all the other parts of the body except for those that are essential to fight, to flight or to freeze. So if you are going to run away as fast as you possibly can for your life, there's no blood needed in your reproductive organs or in your creative brain or whatever. And you've got to get out of there so the blood flows to that part of the brain and to the limbs and make you run. So that's where it goes. And it's very important that we understand that today in our modern life, we don't really have the ability to discern between the rustle in the grass, which triggers this part of the brain, or that email that lands in our disk, or that text, or that jolt, or that car that cuts us off in traffic. Because that all of those things are seen by the brain as something that is attacking us, something that, that needs to keep us safe from. And this, when this part of the brain is triggered, we immediately go into these instinctive modes of fight, flight, or freeze. So that's very important. Part of the brain, the red brain, and it gets the blood flow first, so first priority. Second part, and I call this the yellow or the amber brain, that's roughly the same principle as, as the yellow and amber light on a traffic light. It's called the emotional brain. And this is where uh, it's situated in our limbic system, and this is where our emotions live. In this part of the brain, we are becoming aware of things around us. We may not be in this fight or flight mode, we're out of it and we're in a place where we get triggers from outside and for me this is a little bit like having gauges on a dashboard when you're flying a small plane if you're a pilot of a small plane and you're flying and all of a sudden you see oh my fuel gauge is starting to run low you'd better make plans to go land and take on aboard fuel otherwise you'll crash or you may see something else in a, in, a, in a gauge telling you about there's a storm coming and you have to read all of these types of gauges to successfully fly the plane. Now to fly the plane of your body or to be successful through this life, you also need to be able to read your emotions and see them kind of like gauges on a, on a dashboard. So when you're starting to get irritable, maybe there's something going on here that you're getting that emotion of irritation. Or you start feeling overwhelmed or angry. I know for myself, when I get really overworked, I re reach a place where my fuse gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And I know when I get that feeling of, 
oh, my fuse is just going to explode any moment. I need to stop. I need to reset. I need to go do something else to reset my brain. And so that's the part of your brain, the yellow or the amber brain, where your emotions live. And to me, the big tool here is to be curious. What is this emotion telling me? Why do I feel like this? What can I do with this to keep me safe and take me forward? And it serves me to be a better leader. And then the third part of the brain. To me, the most important, most important part, this is called the green brain or our intellectual brain. And it's the prefrontal cortex, also called the new cortex of the brain. It's in the front part of the brain and it sits just here um, above your eyes. And one taste of seeing that, uh, that an, an animal or a species has a, has a fairly big prefrontal cortex is to see that this area of the head goes up and there's space on top of the brain for the prefrontal cortex. And so that's where Homo sapiens comes in with our big prefrontal cortex, because this is where reasoning lives. This is where we can make decisions, where we can reason, where we can debate, where we come to conclusions. And it's helping and allowing us to use higher thought, like curiosity, creativity, planning, all those types of things, learning from mistakes. This all lives in our intellectual brain. Now, to understand this part of the brain better, you need to realize that whenever there's a threat, your red brain gets the energy first, gets the blood first. And so for you to get out of your red brain state of instinctively reacting to things, you need to get into the green brain. And it takes about six seconds for you to get there. And the way to do this is when you feel that feeling, when your yellow brain is telling you, I'm feeling overwhelmed or I'm feeling threatened. And instead of in that most emotion, staying in it and then sending that next email off in that emotional state, you need to just stop and say to yourself, I need to be able to lift myself out of this into the green brain. Because in the green brain, I can use higher thought. I can be more effective. I can be clever when I'm answering. And so in the green brain mode, you have to get the blood to flow to that part of the brain. And for that, it takes six seconds. So often there, I use techniques like square breathing or others to get the opportunity for the blood to flow into your green brain, into your prefrontal cortex, so that you can think and use better and more creative thinking. So there you have it. Three parts of the brain simplified. There's much more there if you want to read and get um, literature on the, the subject. But basically the red brain or the reptilian brain that keeps us safe and it's fight or flight or freeze. And then the yellow brain, also called the amber brain, the emotional brain, and that's the limbic system. And this is where you kind of get like a dashboard. You read your emotions and you can feel your emotions and they're telling you, um, uh, making you aware of things around you. And then the third thing, the third part of the brain, the green brain, also called the prefrontal cortex or neocortex, or the intellectual brain. And this is where higher thought lives, like reasoning. And for you to breathe, to get blood flow to that brain, takes six seconds. There you have it, the triune brain.